Hey there, welcome back to Spirit of a Handyman. Today, I wanna to show you how we took this giant I-beam and installed it in order to open up this former exterior wall and create this nice, huge, open floor plan. Well, you don't have to, the beam Yep. Higher! Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. You guys can go ahead. the spirit of a handyman. Basically, what we had to do here was put in this beam that was going to carry the weight of that center beam of this great room. So in this picture here, there's a section of wall in the middle, and that's a brick wall, and it's actually carrying the weight of the entire, well, I guess, of half the roof of that great room. So this is after we got everything put in. Um, we have the I-beam sitting on this metal post. I believe it's a four inch round middle post. And that post goes down to the foundation. So that sits on solid concrete um, and it carries that weight all the way down to the foundation wall. First, let me say, don't attempt this without getting a structural engineer report. We paid for that. Structure engineer came out, he took measurements and made recommendations, and then we followed his plan. So we took the weight, um, ran the beam all the way across, dropped it on either side with the beam, and up in the attic there actually is a uh, an eye beam that uh, is supported by a metal post, and that rests down on this eye beam and um, then that spreads the weight out. So initially I was thinking maybe it wouldn't be a big deal, but when the structural engineer climbed up there, that was when he made the recommendation to go with this system. And he made sure that the I-beam was gonna be weighted uh, in order to carry that kind of a load. So in order to do this, we, yeah, and here you can see this is where that beam comes down, that load sits on the I-beam, and we actually tack welded all of those joints where metal touches metal. We brought a welder in and made all those connections. You can see where we sistered all these beams. I wasn't really thrilled about that. I really wish that we would have taken the time to get the careful measurement, but instead what we did is we just cut all of those joists back and um, sistered onto them. And then we've got a two by six, I believe it is, it might be a two by eight, with these special Simpson bracket hangers. Um, and that's to pick up all of these ceiling joists. Uh, these ceiling joists are not really doing anything structural to the building, they are just holding the drywall. So nothing crazy going on there. And then in order to get the right height for these, we actually had to notch each of these two by, what are these, two by six, two by eight, um, in order to get that bracket in there. Um, that way the drywall would sit flush instead of having a little kind of like a bump down. So that's a decision that we made in order to get the drywall to be totally flush in the finished look. And um, that carried the weight for us. So I, <laughs> I don't know how much this thing weighed. Maybe it was a thousand pounds. Um, we had about 15 guys there on site in order to pick this thing up. Um, we were using a number of ladders and scaffolding. Um, pretty much everybody had on a hard hat uh, just as a precautionary bit. And um, the goal is just kind of go up slow and steady. We were only going up eight feet off the ground, so not a crazy... Uh, lift, but I was initially thinking like maybe we need to get a bottle jack or some kind of lift equipment, but with enough manpower, you can just get the thing in place. After you get it, or I should say before you get in place, we put up this temporary wall that was to support all the ceiling joists. Um, and then we uh, got this beam up. In order to get the beam up, we just kind of go slowly 
um, made sure it was level, made sure everything was plumb with the, uh, the two legs on either side, and then again, tack welded it uh, to finish it. So here you can see we've got our crew um, kind of deciding how we're gonna get this thing up. Um, and then here we've got it in place. We had to kind of lift it up, adjust the post to make sure the post was plumb. And then after we got this, then we added our framing around it in order to receive our drywall and finish the whole thing up. Um, so definitely an endeavor. It probably added this I-beam when we purchased it in 2022 cost about $1,500, maybe $2,000, including shipping. Um, then the labor and everything, this was a solid $5,000 um, project. So definitely nothing to sneeze at, but I think the end result ended up looking really good. And uh, though I was a skeptic of it, um, so happy that we did this project and so excited with the finished outcome. So this red post is actually carrying the weight of the I-beam from the roof all the way down. And these um, wooden, what are these six by sixes are temporarily holding that up. So there you have it. That is at least how we did this particular one. Uh, I know every house is unique. Obviously you don't have this addition on the outside of your 1950s ranch, but if you did, that is at least a way that you might do it. So comment down below if you have a similar story. I would love to hear if you watched this video and then used it somehow. Um, comment down below, would love to check that out. And in the meantime, click that subscribe button and stay tuned for more updates from Spirit of a Handyman. Yeah. Yeah.